Happy Saturday, Internet. It's that time once again. After a week filled with chaos and strife, you want to have the time of your life, but the BS in your ears is louder than it's been in years, and being uninformed is one of your greatest fears. So listen here. Dry them tears and clear them ears, because this is The Loop. Major news this week as the U.S. Air Force found and destroyed an ISIS headquarters in Syria after an ISIS agent, dubbed a moron by U.S. General Hawk Carlisle, tweeted a selfie on social media with the terrorist-held building in the background. The airmen of the 361st Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Group were able to glean the location of the building and destroy it a short 22 hours later with three joint direct attack munitions. The successful bombing was announced on Military.com this past Wednesday. However, despite this small victory in Syria, the fight against the terrorist group is far from over. This past Wednesday, Deputy Secretary of State Tony Blinken told Francis Interradio that while the Pentagon had killed over 10,000 ISIS members since last August across Iraq and Syria, the extremist group had recruited just as many new members in that same period. In September 2014, the CIA posited that there may be as many 32,000 fighters in ISIS, but they have been reticent to release a more recent figure. It seems that no matter what gains the global community is able to make against the group, the fight to defeat them will continue for the foreseeable future. Conflict between Ukraine and Russia escalated this past week after there were two skirmishes between Ukrainian troops and anti-government rebels this past Wednesday involving Russian tanks. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko told Parliament that they must be ready to defend themselves against a potential full-scale invasion by Russian troops. The Russian government continues to deny any military presence in the Eastern European nation, but they did say that, quote, volunteers have joined the rebels. President Poroshenko says that at least 9,000 Russian troops are deployed on his country's soil, dressed in plain clothes to aid the rebels and overthrow his government. This comes one week after a reporter discovered plain-clothed Russian troops, tanks, and artillery at the Russian-Ukrainian border. This aggression comes just three weeks before the EU convenes to decide whether or not to renew sanctions against Russia. It remains to be seen if further sanctions will curb potential Russian aggression. In Canada this week, content giant Bell Media accused Canadians who access American Netflix of piracy. Canadians have been using VPN manipulation to make their computers appear to be in the United States so that they can access content exclusive to the US before it comes to Canada and the rest of the world. Bell CEO Marianne Turk was emphatic on the subject of simplifying how Canadians could access as content, but stop short of offering Bell's streaming service, Crave TV, to anyone, even those who don't have cable. This is not the first time that a Bell CEO voiced frustration on the subject. Turk's predecessor, Kevin Kroll, went so far as to accuse Netflix of being complicit in letting users skirt region rules, declaring that this is a business model decision on Netflix's part, it's not a technical problem. Last year, 22% of Canadian Netflix subscribers admitted to VPN manipulation, and until Netflix intervenes, the practice will only likely grow. In the world of health, the biggest news this week comes out of China, where it's been revealed revealed that nearly two-thirds of the nation's underground water and one-third of its surface water have been deemed unsuitable for human contact or consumption by their environmental ministry. China faces a pollution nightmare following three decades of massive industrial growth, and contaminated water is its single greatest challenge. In fact, only 3.4% of their surface water tested by the Ministry of Environmental Protection met their highest grade one standard of cleanliness. Only 63.1% of the water ranked grade three or above is fit for human use. To aid in the cleanup, China has banned water pollution by oil refineries and paper producers beginning January 1st, 2017. Meanwhile, in South Korea, an outbreak of Middle East respiratory syndrome has led to the shutdown of 700 schools nationwide after two deaths and 35 infections have led to a mass health panic. So far, 1,300 people who may have been exposed to the virus have been placed in various levels of quarantine. Middle East respiratory syndrome has infected 1,161 people worldwide and killed 436 people since its emergence in 2012. There is no known cure or vaccine scene. Our thoughts are with the victims as well as their friends and families. Banana fans, brace yourselves. The world's most popular and widely produced type of banana, the Cavendish, is being threatened by a banana-killing fungus that could wipe the popular fruit off the face of the earth. The banana industry has survived a crisis of this scale before, back in the 1950s, when fungus killed the Gros Michel, then the world's most popular and delicious banana. It took years to recover and make the industry profitable with the smaller and less flavorful Cavendish banana, and although there are over 1,000 types of bananas known to man, there is no other banana that is as easy to grow, delicious, and immune to disease as the Cavendish. If the problem cannot be corrected, the industry could disappear. This comes after global banana exports rose to an all-time high of 107 million metric tons in 2013. Dole Foods is among the wholesalers developing a disease-free banana, but whether they can turn the tide of this disease remains to be seen. And finally, what did people love in media this week? In music, ASAP Rocky's new album at long last, ASAP debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, while in TV, Pretty Little Liars owns the iTunes episode 
and season download charts. And finally, at the box office, the Dwayne Johnson vehicle San Andreas dominated with a healthy $54 million domestic gross, followed by Pitch Perfect 2, Tomorrowland, and Mad Max. And that's everything that you need to know about your world this week. So this weekend, when you're telling your friend that her haircut seriously doesn't make her ears look huge, you can also drop her a fat slab of knowledge, because I'm Matt Lieberman, and until next Saturday, you're in the loop. Thanks for watching. So legitimate that MTV Network's VH1 will be televising the Streamy Awards this year. So guys, if you are trying to look for Maud Garrett nudes on the internet and you don't see a scar, you know that S is fake.